Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Bagley, and have I got a treat for you. Today, I'm chatting with Tracy Goodwin, and we are talking about the secret to converting more leads and also the secret to converting more sales. It's not some new marketing or inquiry ploy. It is using what we need to connect, that is our voice, in a way that I promise you've never heard before. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast today. I have with me an incredible guest, Tracy Goodwin from Captivate the Room. And I want to say voice coach, but gosh, Tracy, you are so much more than a voice coach. I don't even know how to explain what it is you do other than you have this magic ability to listen to our voices, to hear the underlying stories and connect it back to like, just, I don't know, our subconscious and childhood and all of the things. and. It was amazing. So Tracy, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for that gorgeous introduction. I'm so excited about our conversation and delighted you had me here with you today. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. So I first met you this past summer at the mastermind event that from the mastermind that I'm in with James Wedmore and um, had a great time that that weekend or that week up in Park City. And then discovered I wanted to work more with you. So I worked with you over the fall and it was the most eye-opening, like fascinating thing ever because you think it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to learn how to enunciate or how to project our voice. But no, 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 no. We learned like the psychology of the voice and we went super deep in that. So tell us a little bit about how you are different than a quote voice coach. Well, that introduction, you know, I remember speaking of the mastermind, you know, so many times, that's the first thing people say is, okay, I don't really don't want to call you a voice coach because that's really not what you do. And, And I actually have just started working with a messaging person to solve that problem. What do you call Tracy? Because when we think of typical voice coaching, we think of like what you said, enunciation. Well, a lot of times the first thing I hear is, oh, I did choir in high school. (laughs) That'll be the first thing I hear. And then a lot of times I'll hear, oh, I, I, you know, enunciation, speak better. And in a microscopic way, I guess that is across the board part of it, but not at all. Because the the methodology that I created, I call psychology of the voice. And I've been doing this work over 30 years. And I I figured out very early on when I focused on, I was a, a primarily a dialect coach. I, I taught actors dialects and I took dialects away from business people because that's what we did 30 years ago. And I was fascinated with why do the Irish sound Irish and I sound Texan? I want to sound like them. Why don't we all <laughs> sound like them? And I'm a researcher. And what I figured out was the subconscious tells the face how to hold itself to create the Irish dialect. All I have to do is shift my face and I can become Irish. (laughs) Literally. I just shifted what I call a placement. And I thought, why? Sense of belonging. The The Irish baby has to fit into the Irish family. And so I thought, okay, this, I, this is fascinating. I have got to dig deeper because if the subconscious puts in the dialect, what else does it do? And what I discovered was the subconscious, literally one phrase can determine how we use our voice the rest of our life. And generally that one phrase is before we're five years old. So the subconscious goal is to protect the heart. The voice is the orchestra of the heart. So you're three and mama says, why do you have to be so loud, Judy? And Judy's subconscious takes that in and says, don't worry, I've got this. And the next thing you know, 35-year-old Judy is sitting in my class or sitting in front of me because she's not really able to play as big as she wants. 
She gets real quiet and small in her videos and she's not commanding the space. And so what happened was Judy subconscious said, I'm going to shift her face and lock her jaw maybe where her sound won't flow out. And there's a million different stories and there's a million different ways to approach this work, but everybody's story is different. I've started really figuring it out with a guy named Bill who came to work with me for the exact same example I just gave. He he walked in the room. I said, Bill, it's great to meet you. And he said, it's really nice to meet you. (laughs) And I went, Bill, do you have siblings? And he said, I have six older sisters. (laughs) So see, he loved his sisters, but he was constantly getting this input that little by little created voice habits in his face that weren't working for him. Now, what I find what I find is typical speak louder. Mm-hmm. It's not going to stick until we eradicate that driver inside. And think about it. We have a lifetime of professors and relationships and bosses and neighbors and Joe, the doorman that have affected how we use our voice. And it's it's all of this has created sounds that are coming out that that aren't working for us because they're being processed the wrong way in the listener subconscious, which was the second part of the work, how are sounds processed in the listener subconscious. So it's voice, but it's subconscious to subconscious voice. How is it being processed? Why are those sounds there? How do I get rid of them? Yeah. I mean, it is fascinating. I, I it, It's just Yeah, absolutely fascinating. And the thing that I think struck me the most is the fact that our subconscious is reading these other subconscious drivers completely out of the realm of our consciousness. We have no idea this is happening and we're just experiencing it and making these decisions about people based on how they're speaking and they're speaking based on the experiences they've had as a kid that they don't even know that they had. <laughs> they don't even know why they're speaking that way. And, you know, we were talking about it when we first uh, got together in Park City and we had to do an exercise. And then, you know, one of the things that I was doing was just rushing, which I know mm-hmm. sometimes I do that. Gotten better. <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was just this like rushing and it came from this, you know, kind of subconscious need to be accepted, to be liked, to like thinking back in high school days of, you know, just, it was Mm -hmm. just kind of me going to the barn with my barn friends that didn't go to school with me. So at my actual school, I just had a couple friends, but you know, it's just like, I'll just kind of be over here and hopefully nobody sees me. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Right. And that's a perfect example of the difference here. So I can say to you, Nicole, you need to slow down. And you're like, okay. And what's happening internally is what is holding the speed in place, just like what you said. Mm -hmm. And speed is such an example. You know, so many people will come and they'll say, I talk too fast and I know I need to slow down. And my first question is always, why do you do it? Are you trying to get to the other side of it to make sure you got the words right? Can you not stand that we're looking at you? You know, I remember one of my stories from a student over speed was, when he was a little boy, they would sit at the dinner table and the kids weren't allowed to talk. The parents would talk. And then the father would look at his watch and go, okay, your turn, go. (laughs) And would give them X amount of minutes. And so he literally was working from that into adulthood that I only have X amount of time before you're going to cut me off. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And everybody's, you know, we all have all these different stories. That's why I don't see it as a one size fits all. And that's why I don't see it. I, I, it's way bigger than you need to slow down, Nicole. Right. And so we rewrite that, we eradicate it. And then maybe we plug in slowing down. Maybe if fast is a part of who you are, well, why would, it, why would I want to take that away from you? It yeah. might just be who you are and I need to roll something else in. It's when there's a negative driver behind it, that's when we got we have to go to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know some of you guys out there might be listening to this and thinking, Nicole, I take p- pictures of dogs. <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you talking about 
voice coaching, voice lessons in the subconscious drivers of my voice, I just want to photograph that puppy. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. Most puppies come with an owner and we need to communicate with that owner. And if you're in business, we need to have that owner pay us, which I mean, oh, when there's money involved, that's going to bring a whole new set of these subconscious drivers right to the surface. And, you know, you start to sweat a little, start to get a little uncomfortable. And our, our voice gives it all away. The hardest question you can ever ask me is, who needs this work? Yeah. Because I believe that everybody does. And exactly what you're talking about. Well, I'm a writer, Tracy. I don't talk to people. Well, I'm a photographer. Well, I'm an artist. Great. You're going to just do art and never sell any of it, never get a gallery gig. The two fastest ways for me to unravel a voice is to say, introduce yourself, then sell me something. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you want me to talk about myself and ask you to buy something from me? No, 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 no. That's going to bring out the worst of the worst of the noise inside and the habits that have been created because there's so much insecurity around both of those things. And that's going to come out vocally. And mm -hmm. you you were saying something earlier about the sounds that we don't even know they're processing negatively. This is a perfect example. If I'm thinking you're not going to buy from me or you don't think I'm a good photographer or you don't know what, uh, it, you know, if I'm not working from the right place, then I'm going to be talking to you like this. And your subconscious is going to key into a sound mm -hmm. and go, I don't know if that woman even knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. I better go find somebody else because I'm going to tell you something based on research. Your ideal client is listening for a sound because there's a lot of photographers. There's a lot of business coaches. There's a lot of voice coaches. Your ideal client is listening for specific sounds that make them go, yes, I have mm -hmm. got to work with Nicole. She is fun and, and I get real nervous around these things and she's going to be fun to work with. I'm going to be at ease with her or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't, we don't reveal that for all these reasons that are, that are going on internally. And that's the game changer when it comes to selling. Mm -hmm. I can hear people in my audience right now saying, well, fine, Nicole, I just won't talk to people on the phone. <laughs> they'll try oh, to no. do, they'll just try to do all their inquiries <laughs> of email, or maybe they'll make a video, but it's like, I make a quick video, but I'm not, I'm not doing this actual one-to-one -one conversation because a lot of people in my world are introverts. Uh, even myself, I I'm right on that, right on that cusp, um, of, like 52, 48%. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you, you know, all the junk in my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I can see them there. There are a lot of introverts. And so they will be nervous to talk to people on a phone just because a, they don't like the phone. I don't like the phone either, right. but you got to do it. Uh, and they get nervous about what to say and not saying the right thing or saying the wrong thing. And then of course there's that judgment of, oh my gosh, this person probably thinks they're going to give me a call and they're expecting that I'm going to do everything for $175 and they're going to think horrible things about me when I say most people spend $1,500 on a photo session. So we have all of this stuff going on. So a lot of people will then just kind of say, all right, forget it. I'm just not even going to do that. And they think that connecting with clients is about, hey, look at this beautiful work and you're going to fall in love with this work and then you're going to hire me. But there's this human connection that, gosh, has to happen. And if we just put ourselves out there a little bit and allow it to potentially happen, then you make that connection where price doesn't even matter anymore because your potential clients like, I want to work with her. Very well said and quite a bit to unpack. 
Yeah. Let <laughs> Sorry, me. I was just <laughs> <going. That's> a, <laughs> You were. And I, did you not see me over here furiously <laughs> writing? I just hope I can read what I wrote. I was living in the moment, Tracy. I, I was living it. in the moment. Thanks you, to you. <laughs> listen, you were creating an experience. And I'm going to talk about that. But the first thing I want to say, I love where you started. People are stunned to discover that I am horrifically shy. <laughs> I mean, people just, whoa, hold on a minute. Right. And I am. So I'm not that far removed from Mm -hmm. what you're talking about. I've got people that are finance people, accountant people. I'm talking real deal introverts. So I get it. My worst nightmare is to have to walk into a room full of people I don't Mm -hmm. know. But I've got techniques. I lean into them and I know exactly what I need to do to not only feel confident inside, but to express myself with confidence The worst choice you can make, especially now, is not letting me hear your voice. I mentioned I'm a researcher. I'm a data tracker. There's nothing that comes out of my mouth that I'm not 100% sure is accurate. The data that we are seeing right now about people's desperate need to connect is something I, I... I've never seen it. I've never seen anything like it. I've always known connection actually happens in the voice. You let me in or you don't, but I've never seen data like this, that I am willing to pay money to be in your group because I know you get me and I can connect with you and my family has shut me out or I've been locked down for two years or I'm working from home. I'm desperately lonely. So that's the first thing I want to address is it's no longer an option for you to do it via email. Mm, mm-hmm. And I and I get the security of that choice, mm-hmm. but I'm going to tell you somebody else is going to get on the phone with them. Yeah, and we we have a very easy advantage in that uh, the person that's contacting you for pet photography, you guys have something in common, which is a love of dog. <laughs> like, yeah. Like yeah. how easy. Here's a uh, just a red carpet rolled out for you don't know what to say, ask them about their dog. Like, yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's a couple of, I want to address inside and outside on this. First of all, it sounds to me like you're entering the call with everything that could go wrong. Mm. I don't have the words. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I, I've already decided that they don't like me. They're going to think it's too expensive. I've already got this figured out. Big red X. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the first biggest mistake. First of all, you are the expert on the call. I got a camera phone, (laughs) but you ought to see my pictures, right? I'm not going to prop my dog up and take a picture of it. You're the expert. And and I bet I'm, I'm... I'm maybe assuming, but I'm afeared that some people are going, well, they know, they they already know what they need. They already know how much this, you know, they already, Mm -hmm. no, they don't. You are the expert. You've got to work from, I'm the expert. I know what I'm talking about. Because see, that's what I'm doing right now, even though I'm horrifically shy. I believe I know what I'm talking about. And you might be thinking right now, but yeah, but I just don't know. You could have just opened your photography, your pet photography business last week. You know more than me. Mm -hmm. You know more than me. And so we have to eradicate all the garbage noise because that garbage noise is out there somewhere. And that's like working from the wavy balloon guy on the side of the road at the car dealership. You know, you can't you can't work from that place. You have to work from I'm the expert. I'm going to set the tone for this conversation. I'm going to come out of the gate scared and all, but I'm going to own that I'm the expert and I'm going to trust that I have the words. The reason you don't have the words is because you don't trust you have the words. Mm -hmm. And because the world teaches us, you better get the words right if you're going to get this deal. And I'm going to tell you something. And you said it. It isn't about the words. It isn't about the price. It's about the experience of what it's going to be like working with you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess if we really broke it down and they didn't have $1,500, I, you know, I guess you could, you could come back at me with that and I, and I could, we could work through that, but why are you starting with that? 
Right. Did 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 you ask them if if that's too much? No, you've already decided what they're thinking. Well, and even if it is too much for them in the moment, if you've made that connection, they might wait and come back to you when they have the money. I've had absolutely multiple clients that during our initial consult, it was more than they expected, and they couldn't yeah. do it at the time, but they came back a year or two later, and. Sure. Yes, please. <laughs> so true. It's so true. And that has even happened with me. I mean, three mm-hmm. years, five years, seven years, and then I end up coaching their whole company or something, <laughs> you know? So it really, two key things when it comes to selling, and I see this, I see my people increase their revenue significantly. First of all, get out of the outcome, get out of what mm-hmm. they're thinking. You've got to be right here in this conversation with mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Because if because if you're anywhere but here, I'm not going to know who you are, which is the second bit. Yeah, you were going to jump mm-hmm. in on that, Nicole. Well, I was going to say one of the things that I think people start to get ahead of themselves on those inquiry calls is that they think, oh, they asked about digital files, so they're not interested in artwork. And what you said before about owning it is owning the conversation and letting them know of course, I sell digital files. Of course, the digital files are available to you. But what I specialize in is beautiful custom wall art. And this is why. And just owning that of like, this is what I do because they mm-hmm. don't even know. I mean, they just are asking for digital files because that's what they assume everybody asks for and everybody gets. So we need to to just, I think, twist change how we are looking at it of, of their asking about digital files is only because that's all they know. It's not necessarily because that's all they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, try to tell people you hear voices for a living. <laughs> right? I mean, hold on a minute. Let's back this, back this truck up. Your buy-in gets me bought in. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bother me at all when people say, well, are you going to help me articulate better? Yeah, but not the way you think, Mm -hmm. right? You're the expert. You have to own it. What is is that going to be like? What what is the experience that you want to create for me? And all of that that you just said goes back to we have to stop working from what you think they're thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your face right now and I could easily in my mind go, well, I'm tanking this interview. She's not even going to roll this out. And, you know, but no, I know you're focused on what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You're listening to me. That's not what you're thinking at all, but I can tell you're focused. I can tell you're listening. I can tell you're taking what I'm saying and and thinking about how to really make this work as the best interview for your people. But I could easily go, oh, well, I've ruined this interview. I get, I as well hang up. (laughs) You know, and that's, that's not what you're thinking at all. Right. Right. And we have to stop doing this. I call it tentacles out versus tentacles in. You've got to come back in. And what do you do? Talk to me about the wall art. Talk to me about the thing. Talk to me about if I like you and I like your feel and I like your look Mm -hmm. of your work and it's going to be fun. And I know you can name your price. Mm -hmm. But when you don't own it, how do you expect me to how do you expect me to buy in if you're not bought in? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's 100% because I think our subconscious can quickly and easily see when someone is unsure, especially of what they're telling you. Because I, I, we're, you know, a lot more than me, obviously, but like we're bombarded with marketing stuff all day. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, we've gotten really good at like, oh, they're just trying to sell me something like having these walls up for, for all of these things. And I, I think a lot of times our potential clients come in and we are assuming that it's just like, oh, they're never going to let me in. And they just, we don't even kind of give them the chance to do so. And as soon as we start to have that crack and lack of belief of what we actually believe in and are offering and know has value, they see that a mile away. They see it a mile away and their subconscious hears it in sounds the size of a grain of sand. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things 
that I know that I do personally is I think about anytime I get on a call with someone, anytime I do like a mastermind, like where you and I met, what is, what is it that I want you to feel Mm -hmm. the first 30 seconds you meet me? Well, I want you to feel like you've known me your whole life. I want you to feel like you're super safe with me and and you can say anything and it's all going to be okay. And I want you to feel like I can get you a result. Mm -hmm. It is up to me to deliver that vocally. And so see, that's coming from within me about you. And generally we do the opposite. What are you thinking about me in that first 30 seconds? And I take that on and then I'm hesitating or I'm speaking really fast or, you know, I was watching a video of somebody yesterday and I even did a a rebuttal video for my students about it, started the video really heavy. Mm. I already knew where we were going. So if you come in in defeat, well, I already know they're going to ask about the Whatever it was you said a minute ago, the digital. digital files. I don't know. I don't know your industry that well. <laughs> that, that digital file, and I don't. Yeah, hi. Yeah, well, you know, it'd be good. At, okay, you have foreshadowed mm-hmm. that you don't believe vocally foreshadowed. You don't believe they're going to work with you. So guess what? Their subconscious globbed onto that sound and said, "Yeah, I don't think we're going to work with her." You're creating a self fulfilling prophecy by Mm -hmm. what you're doing with your voice. What do you want me to feel? What's the experience going to be like? Do you want, are you excited? Are you excited about working with me? Are you excited about me buying your product? Okay. You don't have to be the sham wow commercial, (laughs) but what do you want your listener to feel Mm -hmm. when they have a conversation with you? Yeah, that was the most impactful question, I think, from our time together is, what do I want whoever I'm speaking to to feel? Mm -hmm. And it just allows, at least for my brain, to like get into this different space to just approach it from this this whole different headspace than if I was just allowing these other thoughts of what what the potential outcome that I don't want, you know, like... Fear outcome, like false, what is that? False something appearing real. Oh, false yeah, evidence, yeah. false evidence yeah, appearing yeah. real. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember now too. I had another thought. And you also helped me with this too. I was terrified of the silence. Uh. And terrified on like if I'd be doing a podcast or I'd be doing a live or I'd be, you know, on an inquiry with a client. It's like, oh my gosh. If I stop, and I used to do this actually with my photography too. When I first started as a photographer, I'd be at the session. I'm like, if I'm not shooting every single second, they're going to think I'm a total fraud. They're going to know I have no idea what I'm doing. So, oh my God. Yeah. Put the dog over there. And it was exhausting. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So I think a lot of people too get really scared of the silence in the inquiry process. But especially once we go to that sales room and they say, your total is $3,200. But then, you know, I can go ahead and give you a discount here and now I'm going to throw this in for free. (laughs) Like you haven't even finished saying, like you didn't even take a breath. (laughs) Right, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. let's talk, let's talk about that drop in the price that, that, and when, when I say it, say dropping the price, I mean, saying the price, you've got to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. It's Mm -hmm. critical. And the fastest way to get comfortable in the uncomfortable is to stop deciding what we're thinking. So it all go, you know, all roads mm-hmm. lead back to I'm worthy because I am, uh, you know, I'm worth this price. I am not deciding what you're thinking. I know I'm really good at what I do. And see, a lot of people even standing in confidence won't do it because they fear it's arrogance. Mm. Right. And, and it, and the subconscious, this is what I want everybody to get is that the subconscious is tricking you and you have bought it. You have bought it. The subconscious said, whoa, settle it down, Judy. You're getting a little like a hot shot. And I'm over there going, okay, we need to boost up your confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's because, see, it goes back to what externally did we see? We all remember that guy or that girl in high school that was so arrogant. And we said, we're never, subconscious said, you're never Mm going to act like that. So the pendulum swung too far. So what happens is we really bring the foreshadowing in when we're, when I'm about to say it's $42,000 to work with me, (laughs) right? And I always use that ridiculous example because it's not $42,000 to work with me, 
but we're working from the wrong place. We're working from, they can't afford me. They're Mm going to think this is too much. They're going to, they're not about to pay for this. Why do I even charge this money? Who do I think I, why am I, you know what? I'm going to go get a job at the mall. (laughs) Right. You know, we get, we can go from zero to that in three seconds. And then what happens is exactly what you said. I'm going to, I'm going to heighten it a little bit because it becomes 3,200. Like a question. (laughs) Like a question. Is that okay? Am Mm -hmm. I worth that? What do you think? And I see it every day. I see it every day. And it has to become, it's Mm 3,200. Not it's 3,200. But I can break it into 47 (laughs) payment. No, you know, I'll do it for free. (laughs) Right. 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 (laughs) And and a lot of times, too, you say it and they're silent and then we're silent. And then our brain goes to that immediate place of, oh, my gosh, they think that I am just highway robbery. This is I'm terrible. They're judging me. Uh, Who am I? Blah, blah, blah. But they could very much just go to. Okay, so do I need to move money from saving? Yeah. Do I want to put it on my credit card or do yeah. I want to write a check? Like they already, they, they're going to do it. They want to say yes. They're yeah. excited. They're just thinking for a minute of how to make it happen or where they want to pull the money from. Right, right. And worry over here like, but it's okay. I'm going to give you some these extra things. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I know it. And you've got to stop that right now. And my students will laugh at me. They will laugh at me. They'll say, good grief. I didn't know if your Zoom was frozen. I didn't know (laughs) if there was a health issue. You sat there in that pause so long, I didn't know what to do. And it doesn't bother me at all because it is such a powerful place to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean power like Disney villain power. I mean power from the perspective of when I tell you it's $3,200 to work with me in that pause your subconscious is reading that silence as I care about you. Mm. And that is what I want you to know that when you work with me, yes, it is this price, but it's going to be an experience like you never dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And that will happen in that pause. And the minute I start backpedaling, now I've lost my credibility. I've Mm -hmm. lost my confidence. I've lost my value. And so what happens is we put things in place that we think are going to get us the result. They cost us the result, like the backpedaling, like here's all the, everything I own for free. In fact, you know, here's my, you move into my house, it's yours. Here's the, you, <laughs> you know. You have my dog too. <laughs> totally. Right. And, and, it, and it's exactly right. I will say to people all the time, and I do this, ex- I don't know if I did this with y'all, but I'll make a face, a mean face. And I'll say, what am I thinking about? And, and the students will say, that you don't like us. And, you know, they say all these things and I'm saying, what can I sell to make the money to work with you? That mm-hmm. could be what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Or like you said, how am I going to move it from savings or put it on my credit card? Or, oh, if I put it on the credit card, I could get the points. I could get some miles. I could find, <laughs> right. right. Stop it. Stop deciding what we're thinking. You make the decision. So coaches will say, you be comfortable with your price. You you know, raise it to the mm-hmm. level that you're comfortable with. That's $3,200. I'm going to say, now you have to vocally own it. Mm-hmm. Because it, you can internally go, yeah, I'm worth $42,000. And then if you say, uh, $42,000, mm-hmm. what was that for? So do you have to, because some people maybe are like faking it till they make it with their prices, where could, where I mean, anything profitable, they're like, oh my gosh, this makes me want to vomit because they have so many like just deep subconscious money value (laughs) issues. So should they keep those prices a little bit lower where they can get that confidence? And then like once they can kind of see that it works and have that little bit more confidence, is it easier to raise it up? Or should you go a little bit higher than you're comfortable for and like get out of that little comfort box and try to like get comfortable there? That's a really great question. And I want to think about this for a second because I'm a little torn on the answer I want to yeah. give. No matter what, there must be vocal buy-in. Mm-hmm. No matter what, whether you, I, I'm all about proof. 
I like for my people to get quick proof because I'm trying to sell them on something. I'm trying to sell them on own that, put that mm-hmm. out there, sit in that pause. And they're like, yeah, I don't know, no, you know, no, no, do it. And they do it and they get different proof. Mm-hmm. They get proof that everything they thought was going to happen doesn't happen. And now we're working from new proof. So I'm all about proof. But from the, and, and I guess the reason I'm hedging a bit on this is from the internal perspective. I really want to go to the place of why. I really mm-hmm. want to unroot the why around why do you think we're not going to pay that? Why do you think, you know, I, there's always, if we're not working from the story that we want to work from, I can give you a voice technique. I can tell you, you've got to boldly own it like it's a fact, but there's always a little bit of a risk if that voice is very, very loud inside going, what makes you think you're worth that, fool? Mm-hmm. Right? So it's a it's a bit of a trick box question. And I think we have to look at both. Mm-hmm. I think for some people, it is going to be Raise that price up, but own it, get the proof that that that's okay, and mm-hmm. then you're going to rise up. For other people, they're just not going to be able to vocally buy in mm-hmm. b- with that higher price, but they can with the lower price. And we don't know what's going on inside you. Mm-hmm. We're working off of sounds. So I have no idea what's happening inside of you. I am subconsciously reading a sound. And so I think your, your, your audience probably knows what, now that may be an assumption, but would they know what they would be more inclined to do? Actually, I can believe that I'm worth 3,200 and I'm going to believe that and I'm going to own that. But one of the things that could be helpful here, you, you mentioned, do we just fake it till we make it? And I, I'm, I'm never about that phrase, but I've got one very, very close to it, which Mm -hmm. is act as if the outcome's yours. Mm, mm -hmm. Don't be an actor unless you want to be, you can be an actor. But if I, if I'm working from, of course they want to work with me. Why wouldn't they? I have no weight on my voice. Mm -hmm. I have a, a lighter sound, which is, is much more inducive. I don't know if that's the right word. Is it, is that the word I want? Conducive. Conducive, I think is the word that I want for them going. Yes. Then well, they're not going to buy it anyway. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm not going to get what I want. So I'm going to just tell them like this, that's heavy. So I think you can go either way. You can be solid with the lower price, get the proof that that's good because you vocally owned it, or you can raise it up. I would probably personally be more inclined to raise it up and test it out. But the, but like the other day I had a gal I was working with and she thought she was owning it. Mm-hmm. See, perception reception plays in here. She's she she that's is exactly what she wanted to work on. Let me say the price. Let me mm-hmm. say the price. I got the rent. Let me say the price. And she kept going. It's fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. And I would say, no, don't question me. Own it. What What is it going to feel like when I write that check for you? Or well, people don't do checks anymore, right, but right. right, you know, it, it's it's 1500. No, it's not. It's 1500. And yeah. we finally got her there, but she was having to override, 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 override. But the thing is, for some people, and this was the case with her, the repetition of the physical override eradicated the noise. Mm -hmm. but she had to get locked in on what was the physical habit because she couldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. She couldn't hear it. Yeah. I was going to say that's one of the biggest benefits that I found working with you too, is the perception reception. I'm like, Mm -hmm. Oh no, I thought I was whatever. You're like, well, I'm still hearing this. Mm -hmm. And so you work through it. And then all of a sudden, like you do it again and you're like, how'd that feel? I'm like, Oh my God, it felt 8,000 times better. So then once you can feel that feeling, then it's so much easier to catch yourself of like, oh, I'm not in the right place for this. Or that didn't feel as light and easy and true. It didn't feel as true as when I'm actually allowing myself to speak without 
all the filters. Absolutely. And for your kinesthetic people, so I'm a kinesthetic learner, and this is exactly how, as a shy person, I can go do conversations with strangers. I go Mm -hmm. teach at a conference and you get the dreaded invitation for the VIP and you're like, I'm not a VIP. I can't make it. (laughs) Right. And you know, you're going to have to walk into the cocktail party with a room full of strangers at a conference. And it's literally what is the physical representation of when I am at my best. And when I am at my best, it is when I am coaching. Mm -hmm. I put on the physicality of I'm just coaching. And then I'm fine. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways we can go at this. And it's it's subjective because in my opinion, like I said, it's not a one size fits all. It's not a just slow down, just over articulate. No, I want to know why you're not articulating is because you don't want your sound coming out of your mouth because you think you're bothering people. Right. Right. It's a it's a tangled necklace. But there's a lot of different angles in what we're talking about here because all your people are going to be different. Try, try them out, try these things out Mm -hmm. and see what works for you. But the bottom line is it's an inside and an outside job. You have to, I go back to buy-in and you have to buy in and you have to be okay with being comfortable with that Mm buy-in and not decide what we're thinking. And through that, you're creating a new habit. That's really what this work is about. You've created a vocal habit of, I'm going to talk really quiet, or I'm going to talk really fast, or I'm going to, you know, there's a vocal Mm -hmm. habit there. And anybody who's ever tried to break a habit at anything, that's the work. It's the repetition, Mm -hmm. but you'll never, it it can't be theory. You, You can't, well, I'll just do another email. I'll think about that. No, you take a physical action that's different because it'll, it'll pay off dividends when we hear your voice. It's how we decide who you are. It's how we connect with you. Mm-hmm. It's more critical now than ever before in the whole time I've been doing this work. Yeah. So good. I do want to throw in one potential reframe for people um, that would help them, I think, with practicing. And that is whether it's at an inquiry or all the way through to the booking like or the, uh, the sales session. At either point, that person reached out to you because yeah. they're interested in learning more from you. You're not cold calling them. Okay, that's a whole nother set of yeah. subconscious things that we need to get over. But for the people that have inquired to you, they want to hear from you. So, yeah. so let them. <laughs> yeah. And think of it like a conversation. Mm-hmm. Don't take lower the stakes. I gotta have I gotta get this right. I gotta say the word right words so they want to buy from me. And then I gotta figure out what I'm no. Hey, I can't wait to talk to Nicole today. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to hearing what she has. I want to I can't wait to hear about her dog. Yep. It's just a conversation. It's a conversation in your mind with somebody you know, like, and trust. Mm-hmm. I talk to everybody now. I'm from Texas <laughs> and we are known to be friendly. But <laughs> I am very shy, but I talk to everybody like I've known in my whole life Mm -hmm. because if I put you at ease, I have a much better chance of getting you results, of you listening to me, maybe even you buying from me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to create the experience of what it's like to be around me. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Tracy, this has been... So good. So good. If people want to learn more about you from you, where can they find you? Well, I I am so happy and I really hope this is helpful. I encourage your people so much to take these things and and get on it. They can go to my well, the website is captivatetheroom.com and I'm on social media, Captivate the Room. And I it's a couple of things I'm Tracy Goodwin, but the best place to find me is the website. And then of course, I'm always doing free trainings and things. My next one they can find is a one-time live event. It's captivatetheroom.com forward slash experience. So they might want to find out about that, but that's where you can find me. Oh, that is great. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, You guys, you should definitely go check out Tracy's stuff. Uh, If you 
want more confidence, if you want to just really own your voice, I cannot recommend her highly enough. The class was absolutely incredible. And um, the coaching that came with it was just worth every penny plus some. So go check it out, Tracy. Thank you so much for being here with us. Enjoy this conversation. It's an eye-opening as always. And uh, thanks again. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to see you. You too. If you enjoy this podcast episode, go ahead and take a screenshot of this episode on your phone and post it up there on your Instagram stories and be sure to tag us at Hair of the Dog Academy. And we would just love to see how you're listening. And uh, full disclosure, sometimes we just like to give away a little pet photographer swag in the form of Hair of the Dog t-shirts and sweatshirts. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and share that screenshot of this episode. And don't forget to tag us at Hair of the Dog Academy. And while you're there, maybe you want to jump on over to our account and see what we're up to on the gram. Would love to connect with you. Thanks for listening to the Hair of the Dog podcast. This was episode number 128. If you want to check out the show notes for access to any of the resources that we mentioned, simply go to www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash 128. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.